Jeremy, we are recording right now, episode seven. How, how has this show been on for seven years? What is what is going on? In the... It's it's pretty insane. So you say seven it's years. Do you remember? Do you remember the date? The actual date the first episode was released. Uh, released. Uh, it yes, was it very was. end of March, very early April. If somebody um, went to I, a podcatcher and like looked and scrolled back, what date would they see? I think it was like April four, five, six. Okay. Interesting. But the, you, but the date March 31st is also in my head. And I'm not sure if that's when I uploaded them. Because I uploaded the first three at once. Yep, you are correct. Yep, you are correct. Uh, so we, uh, you would be wrong. If people want to take guesses, we, they can put it in the chat. A uh, bunch of people uh, are coming in here. Craig Ware. <laughs> Craig all says this is like again. WrestleMania all over again. Um, <laughs> I, I've i seen clips from, from WrestleMania 38. I don't know if that's a compliment. <laughs> uh, so a bunch of Whistlekick families here. We got, we got hey, Jenny. Hey, what's up, Jenny? Jenny's watching. And, and hello, uh, and Tom, hello to everyone else. I, I, everybody. Like we're, um, I don't know that I'm going to be able to keep I, up with everybody, but so uh, I think everyone needs to know, like that we're doing this very differently in the fact that you have asked me to full screen the the output, right? So what I'm seeing, it's a little bit ahead of time, but it's exactly what everyone else is seeing. So as you do things behind the scenes, I won't know. I don't know who you're bringing on. I don't know what we're doing. I don't see the chat. I see nothing. I'm just here. I don't like it's weird. I'm like, I don't what do I what do I do with my hands? <laughs> What's going on, Stacy? So like, what, got, are, what are hands? Lots doing? of people in the chat. This is great. This is great. So hey Liz. Uh, no one, no one has uh, has guessed on the date, but the actual first dates, the first uh episode came out, first three episodes, April 16th. Hmm. It's later than I thought. Okay. But here, here's what's interesting. That's almost, that's almost today. Uh, that's exactly what I was going to say. It, it, yeah. Today's April 11th. Like, yeah. that's pretty cool. Um, it's kind of cool. It, yeah, yeah, it really is. So I have, a, I, have a, uh, I have another question for you. Okay. We've done – okay, I say, I'm going to say we a lot for the audience. So I have, I have not done 700 episodes. But Whistlekick has done but, seven. But you are part of Whistlekick. Whistlekick is an entity. You are right. more than allowed to speak okay. as Whistlekick. So right. we've done seven seven hundred episodes. Yeah, which actually is not quite correct. That number yes. is wrong. Do you know what the actual right. number is? How many podcast episodes you've actually released? Six hundred ninety nine. No. Seven hundred and four. What? Yep. Did I double number some of them? No. Uh, well, Tony Blauer was 108 twice. With and two then, parts. Yeah, two parts. Each one was a separate was a separate podcast episode. Mm -hmm. You also did bonus ones z labeled 001 and 002. That's right. For the pandemic stuff. Yeah. And uh, there were two others as well. Uh, one of them was on the fight conditioning program. It was a bonus episode. So we mm -hmm. actually now one. are you remembering the episode that we didn't do because we skipped one number? I think uh, it was two five nine. Uh, that was two six eight. But you six, released eight, the five, not... you released a five minute discussion about why you were not releasing one. <laughs> so that counts as an episode according <sighs> to podcast catchers. So you actually have seven hundred and four. Episode. What about all the ones we recorded that haven't come out yet? Which uh, is a bunch. Okay. That's, fair. That's fair. So here's my question it's... for you. But before we bring on some of our fun guests, okay, uh, how many of your first? Six. Okay, six. Go. I don't know what's the rest of the question. Well, why don't you wait for me to finish? Because okay. I wanted to be right. Well, maybe you will be right. How many of your first 10 interview episodes do you remember the names of? Husen, Glenn, Adam, 
Michelle. So far, so good. Lane Mello. Yeah. Yeah, five more. I, I, I can do math. Number five was also a Taekwondo person. Number five was uh, uh, Master Adam Grogan. Yep. Who was three then? I thought Grogan was three. No, Grogan was five. Okay, who was three? So you're are you tapping out? You only get five of your first ten? Oh, Jake. Three was Jake Daniele. Correct. Um Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Nine was Andy Campbell. Correct. Guys, he's doing pretty good. Hmm. Stacy's uh, giving us a little do dee do 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 do. I I might like if I'm gonna get another one, it's gonna take a while. It's probably too long and, and okay. Really annoying. Okay. So people. number number seven was Master Liza Jost. Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. Uh, eight was uh, Eddie. I'm gonna mispronounce. Oh, Eddie it. Eddie and Duhar. That's it. Yep. And number ten, Master Brendan Goodall. I should remember him. Whoops. That's okay. I thought, he was, I thought he was a few episodes later. Oh, look at this. Liz came through with the clutch. Number 10. Liz cheated. Liz cheated. She didn't know that. Oh. She doesn't. She didn't know that. You don't, you don't know that she didn't know. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Who? Okay. If somebody else is memorizing our podcast and their guests better than I know them. We need to have a chat about your priorities in life. Okay. Or you have a very, very good memory and we need to find a way to make me money with that. I'm with you. Either um, way. Yeah. Do you, uh, <laughs> okay. Liz is coming clean. She did cheat. Yeah. Unsurprised. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you remember all of your milestone episodes? Like, what did you do for episode 100, 200, 300? Uh, Daniel interviewed me. 200 was was live. 300 was more or less the same. One of them, was it 200 or 300 that we kind of did as a party and I drank a bunch? So 300, you had two guests on. Um. Was I think that was the one that was was it Daniel and Kimberly? No, nope, close. Daniel and Brendan. Okay, Kimberly was here for that one though. I think she was in the background. She didn't want to be on camera. I feel like she popped on camera. And what's number four hundred? I don't remember. Four hundred was a look, a whistle kick look back. Okay. Uh, Liz is also trying to come clean. She didn't say she cheated. She says she remembered because she I knew him from my school. So maybe that they I don't maybe. maybe. Okay. What was episode uh, 500? 500 was the time capsule. Correct. Advice for 100 years from now, which was really cool yeah. to be part of. Yeah, uh, that was fun. Yeah, absolutely. Uh number 600. 600. It was a year ago. It was a year I ago. Remember. I should remember. You should. Um, but I don't. Okay. I'm sure it was a live episode. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you a hint because I'm gonna bring I would them like in. a hint. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring them into the chat. Oh, oh, it was we did the super podcast with Jared Dando. You got it. So here we go. Welcome to the <laughs> show. Hey! Howdy. <laughs> Good on, evening, man? guys. How are you? Great to see you. Congratulations on seven hundred. Thank you for Thank having you. me back. Thank you. Surprise. How are, how, how are the new digs on the East Coast? Uh, the new digs, oh, you pay attention. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, I'm in them right now. I got some LED lights back there on the ground trying to look fancy. <laughs> very fancy. I dig it. My, my awesome. $40 investment. And now that I look hey. at you at 700 episodes, at some point, can we get like a Kickstarter going to get you an iron or a dry cleaner for that backdrop there? I iron this. I iron this myself. Oh, you put the creases into the cloth. 
Uh, no, no, I took them out. It was way worse when I got it. Okay, well, you've done improvement. That's what this is all about, improvement. What this is improved? a very multifunctional room. Very I versatile. Say no more. There's, I'm yeah. sure, missing bodies not far off camera. <laughs> Multi-purpose. Uh... Hi, Elizabeth. Nice to see you. This on, only only Hi, pets. Daddy. The only bodies buried anywhere nearby are pets. Yikes. <laughs> So in 700 episodes, speaking of improvement, yeah. what would you say has improved the most surprising improvement that you, you did not expect to be getting better at? What's the biggest improvement you've seen in 700 episodes? My ability to improv. Interesting. I'm, I've gotten really good at talking about nothing. Okay. And oh, there's also been this... Huh? Not characters. Like, let's be a waiter in a French restaurant. Go. Okay, this improv can still be improved. Get out. Okay. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> Very good. Um, there's also, and, and I don't know when I developed this, but I have this this skill, and, and maybe you have this too, because I know you do, you, you, you kind of free flow on some of your episodes. I can talk to the guest and have a parallel track going in my brain as I think about what's coming next. So like I can operate in two roles at the same time. You know, studies have proven that most people think they can multitask, but they really can't. So I'm suggesting that maybe you're not listening as well as you could. Maybe. Dunning Kruger effect. Like, oh, you know what I'm really good at is not really listening to my guest, but thinking about other things, but still listening. So what? <laughs> what if it's happening when I'm the one talking? Hmm. You're not listening to yourself. No. Oh, that's an interesting concept. I'll have to think. Two shades, sir. Two shades. Because <laughs> because it because that happens and and that was a skill that I didn't even know was possible to develop but it's it's there and it allows me to because sometimes you know you have guests on your show sometimes they don't give you something you know mm -hmm. usually they give you enough and you can keep going but if they don't give you something right. you kind of you you start fishing you start fishing and so I throw out words and I'm talking and I'm trying to get the, I'm listening for them to say something oh yeah or reminds me of a time right I'm just kind of dangling dangling that that lure out there. And I'm operating in parallel saying, okay, like if this line doesn't lead me anywhere, what was it they said, you know, 20 minutes ago and I'm trying to pull that back. So if I run out of what I was trying to say, right. I, it usually gives me enough of a buffer to go back. Would you because drop? we very, we very rarely, we used to, and, and I've got, I, I keep notes for every, for every episode. Right. And it, we used to have a section. OK, you know, like here's where Jeremy wasn't sure what to say for 15 seconds. And, I, and I'd say tell the guests like, oh, hold on. I'm not sure what to say. Uh, I'm thinking about transition here. OK, I've got it. And I'd give him a question. I haven't done that in a long time. Oh, OK. Would you draw a parallel for when you're sparring? There's a difference between just saying, ah, I'm not really mm. thinking. And having that dialogue going on in your head with yourself saying, okay, well, here's the situation. You know, I really wanted to work on my hook kick tonight. So I think I'm going to work on that hook kick. So you have like this kind of second voice going yeah. on, coaching yourself while you're doing something. Yeah. yeah, there's definitely a parallel. And I think early on when you're doing anything, if you're not quite sure what to do, we have a tendency to kind of, kind of freeze up. Like, and you've probably seen that. I think we've all seen that with people sparring, you know, they're like, I don't know how to handle this situation. The things that I'm doing that usually work aren't working. What do I do? And they just, they just kind of freeze. They may not even realize they freeze. Right. But as you get better, you start, okay, I'm just going to throw some things, just keep people away from me. I'm going to throw a jab. I'm going to throw some kicks, whatever it is. And yeah. then you kind of get your bearings again. Same yeah. idea. Yeah. I see that's okay. So um, time for a question. Are you ready? I'm always ready. Heck yeah. Okay. Let's, I don't know what the question is. Let's do it. I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> Can you share a memory or a time a martial arts instructor made a significant impact on your life? Uh, yes. Yeah. Who's asking that question? Where does that come from? Uh, Andrew put it up for me to ask you. Oh, okay. So uh, <laughs> um, I would like to say the, the cheesy answer, which is uh, pretty much every time. I mean, as a student, you are always in the, should be, in absorb mode. And sometimes it's what the teacher says and that changes something. Sometimes it's what you see the teacher doing that changes something. 
And that's not necessarily something good that they do. It could be something that you don't like that what they do, you know? Sure. So if you're in absorbing mode, it's there's I remember like for instance, I mean, a, a teacher can make a significant impact once by tripping. Like the, the teacher at a seminar, this is the big guy, and came in and kind of stumbled on his feet. And then you think, you know, you have like these illusions like, no, the master's mm. perfect. He doesn't trip. And then so that was a significant like feeling. And then afterwards, when I knew him for a couple of years, he said, you know what I do at seminars is I'll purposely trip or belch or fail at something to put everybody at ease, to let them know that like I'm that. just the first and to kind of change the tone in the room. And at that level, that is a, that, that's a multi-level significant moment for me. Like, mm -hmm. wow, you're thinking so far ahead as a teacher how to make students feel comfortable, how to help them learn. I thought that was a pretty significant. So that one just popped into my head. What do you think that, about that? That's awesome. I, I think I think that's great. I, I've had the opportunity, uh, as I'm sure a lot of us have, to train with some pretty remarkable teachers, not just people who have done things, but are, are really good at, at teaching. And I think the greater the, the perceived gap between where you are and where they are, the harder it is to make that investment in time and effort in training. You know, how many times have we heard people on you know day one two ten say oh look how good that person is i'm never going to be there you know and they, they they forget that the reason that person's there is because they just kept showing up and working hard and we all have that ability so to to provide that reminder i think is really cool i yeah. i may i may use that I, I think, thank you i think yeah the higher your stature goes then the more that will become necessary right unless you're a cult leader in which case you do the opposite but um, yeah, <laughs> you know, if you're just, a, <laughs> which I'm still, I want to see what's behind that sheet. I'm still very intrigued with what's going on there. Whistle kick head. It's a shower curtain. Okay. I was just looking at shower curtains today. So it's I, the, I have an it's, eye for it. It's, I'm in the bathroom. It's just the bathtub. It's fine. Don't worry about God, it. God, I hope you're sitting on a chair. <laughs> he is not in the bathroom. <laughs> okay, can can we just talk about how terrible a setup for a bathroom this would be? Here's the toilet, and here's the shower. Like, like what are you like? What are you doing? Like, like you're like, all right, and now I'm just gonna like get a lot of work done. No transition I, time. Just... It would it would definitely be in an RV. Like that's the only way you would you would make that work. What's up, Jared? Jared, hey, Jared. Hey, guys. Hey, that's awesome. Uh, and oh, I want to thank you so much for coming on. It's really yeah, thanks, it's so great to have uh, people you. who are so thoughtful and insightful and, uh, you know, have you come on and speak your words. It's awesome. Be Love be it. Andrew, before, before he leaves, Andrew, before yeah. you leave, I, I you know, I've, I've said this once or twice on the show, but I haven't said it for a long time. You you were the rabbit I was chasing in the beginning. The quality <laughs> that you put out, um, the caliber of your conversation, um Thanks. was really significant and it meant a lot to me and i would listen to your show and say okay pick one thing what's he doing that i can get better at and i continue to listen to your show you continue to put out an absolutely wonderful show and and, and for for listeners viewers I, I really hope that if they have not checked out the fight for a happy life podcast that they will because you continue to knock it out of the park you're very so kind thank, thank you, you for, for doing that turning that on me there and Sending me the best guest ever plaque, I thought was unnecessary, but I thank you for it. I put that up right away to any other guests who are. Well, listening. your check cleared, so you know. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I had to. And there's more coming. I hope to be here at the 800 episode. So, woo! <laughs> Hold on to my number. Congratulations, to guys, and uh, Thanks, keep man. up the great work. It's really cool to appreciate see it. Thanks, Thanks so much, Ando. Be well. well oh, this is so much fun. And yeah. we're not even done yet, right? Like we just get to keep doing this. I know we got we got lots more people. Can th can this just be my life? Can I just sit here and talk to people and you run all this stuff? That'd be, <laughs> that'd be that'd be great. I still don't know what to do with my hands. Has, is anyone noticing this that I don't gesticulate this much? Um, okay. I usually have like typey things and, and and mouse things to do, but now I'm just like whatever. So um, this is super fun. It's great to have him on, and you know, people in the yeah. chat. And keep He's keep such a good dude. Up. Let us know what you're thinking. Let us know you're here. Uh, you know, Brian, uh, Brian Sargent, he's got an idea for your hands. Just high block. Yeah, sure. That's something to do with your hands. Practice your basics, you know. <laughs> um, 
so here's a, I have, a, I have another question for you. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, Jared says you should just sit on your hands or get a coffee. I'm drinking tea. I, I am not going to have coffee at 9 p.m. That's a tragic yeah, I'm, idea. I'm doing, I'm doing tea. Um, Especially since all I've had in the last like four weeks is like th decaf three times. If I had a cup of coffee, I'd be. <laughs> you would all get emails at like three in the morning. <laughs> um, so do you remember the first episode that I co-hosted with you on? No. Do you want to take a not. You, want, you want to take a guess? Oh. People in the audience can tr can guess as well. Like so if you're watching, what episode was the first one that that I Is this in the late threes? No, it's way after that. Really? My interview episode was 472. For real? For real. So so it's in the fives. Yep. You we've only been doing this together for a year and a half. Uh, basically, yeah, it's 19 months, actually. Holy cow. Feels like forever. Yep. Stacy's saying 501. No. Oh, uh, Jared Wilson wants to know if it's Price is Right rules for guessing. If that's the case, then... then... No. No, because <laughs> everybody's going to guess one, and that's lame. It's and then, not lame if there's a car on the line. And it'll be 502, lame. 503... <laughs> also, uh, Plinko is the best Price is Right game, and totally. there's no alternate answer. Uh, Jeremy, oh, uh, hi, Frank. Frank's enjoying you not knowing what to do with yourself. I have no idea. <laughs> this is so weird. Um, so it was anyone else guessing? I don't want to give the. I don't want to tell you the answer right away. Stacy's the only one guessed. Oh, Elizabeth is guessing five fifty. We're we'll waiting another couple seconds. Um, so nine, you said nineteen months. That's I don't know, like six hundred. Okay, Tommy's the closest so far. Five forty-three. Oh no, five fifty. Actually, technically, Elizabeth would have been. The uh, closest at 550. We've got uh, Andrew Marley here. Thank you, Andrew. Nice to see you here. You What's were close, up, Andrew. Uh, Andrew's episode was so much fun, and he's got a great he name. Does. He does. He does. Marley is a great name. That's true. Uh, Jared's uh, saying I was a good addition. Uh, thanks for helping Jeremy out. You know what? It's so much fun. It's so much fun. I Jared, really... can you not? I've known you for this long, and you can't spell my name. Oh man, look at that. Oof. That's you know, better. and it's funny because every time, so those of you who don't know, Jared has a, a little bit of a non-traditional spelling in his name, and I work really hard to make sure I spell it right, even when autocorrect decides I'm being wrong. All right. So uh, we're going to bring our next guest in. Are, are you ready? Oh, sure. Okay. Well, whether you're ready or not. It's hard, it's hard to know if you're ready when you don't know what you're preparing for. <laughs> well, here we go. Here he comes. Craig! Oh, oh, sorry. I was catching up on... This book right here. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> hey, hey, man. What's going on? What's going on, buddy? Is this um, some sort of special event? Is there something going on I should know about? <laughs> we, um, we, we had some wardrobe decisions. I didn't, I didn't wear my my dragon. Jacket. I was genuinely nervous that we were going to be matching, so I'm glad that you chose not to. Uh, yeah. Hey, so, um, are we raising money for something? Is this a telethon? Uh, sure, sure. Oh, cool. Uh, every. Everybody go to whistlekick.com and buy something so I can, <laughs> I don't know, buy another hoodie. So I can another buy my own hoodies because somebody has to pay for them, and that's always me. Oh, what's up, I'll buddy? Go, maybe it's you. I'm, I'm I'm good, man. How are you? Hey, I'm psyched, were man. You, were you in the chat when I guessed you were in the chat? Did you hear me say that? No, I didn't hear you. Oh, uh, bummer. Bummer. No, I transitioned from Andrew's the chat. Andrew said there there are are six people in the chat, and I'm not telling you who they are. And I just said hi, Craig, because I figured <laughs> statistically you were the best bet. <laughs> oh, I like Stacy's Stacy's answer. She says hi, Craig, raising money for Jeremy's next trip to Belize. 
Yes, please. You know, this whole segment could be crazy ideas I've had. What's up, Noah? Noah's here. Hi, Noah. I know him. That's a lot. It would... <laughs> Noah. <laughs> Oh, Noah. <laughs> oh, Noah. <laughs> oh, inside jokes. Oh, oh man. Inside jokes are the best. So, so fun trivia yeah. fact. I, I don't know. Yeah. Jeremy, I'm sure you probably know this. Um, I have recurred. I have been a guest on like four episodes, and I don't have my Is own standing on it. Has it only been four? <laughs> yeah, well. Like we has been so many more. That's because we, we gate crash seminars together. It's, yes. Yeah, we we work on a lot of things together. You you've been an amazing addition to the the fam. So thank you. Hey, my pleasure. My pleasure. Well, so you'll come on. You'll come on for an interview at some point. At, at this point, you're kind of, you know, you and I have talked about this a little bit, and I'm I'm not going to share all that because that that's between. But you're also this absolutely wonderful, um, like ace in the hole. Like if if somehow we need an episode, I know we can just be like, hey Craig, can you record on? And you'll be yes. And we'll Wait, just, you just want okay. me to talk for an hour about myself? Back up. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Ooh. man. No, it's super cool. 700. Andrew, I remember. Andrew, put that back up. That was funny. Liz says, yes, every time the word episode is said, $5 for Jeremy's next vacation. Episode, we, episode, we, episode, episode. Yeah, but who's paying it? Can we rig up like a digital, I don't know, kind of a swear jar? <laughs> <laughs> Jared says 700 episodes is an impressive amount of talking. It really is. Especially when you f figure that through all the interview episodes, I do so little talking. So I'm pretty psyched. Are we, am I allowed to talk about like all sorts of stuff? Mm, we shouldn't talk about the thing we're working on yet. We're working on 12 things, Jeremy. I know. I know. But the thing that we, <clears throat> we set up a, a, a week, a time to work on the thing. Got you. That we're not. Let's not do. talk about that thing. That that needs to get rolled out like all at once, like because it's okay. Crazy. Well, can we talk about um, the super excited announcement about the free training day Northwest? Yeah, because that has a Facebook event. Yeah, right. I'm officially going. Everything's planned, ready to oh, go. Nice. So I'm That's I'm awesome. hopping a plane. I'm going to I'm going to the Northwest with you. I hope you didn't buy a ticket yet. No. Okay, good because I don't know when we're going out. <laughs> No, I didn't. No, I'm just. I set aside a, a budget awesome. line awesome. item. Uh, for those of you who do, who don't know, um, yes, our aim for this year is three free training days: November 12th in Keene, New Hampshire; uh, October 22nd in the Portland, Oregon area; and there's another one that we are hoping to announce in the coming weeks. Uh, it is not. It is not final yet, but we're hoping to get there. And I'm planning on being at all of them. And I'm probably going to be at all of them. That would be really weird if you weren't. We will get to a point where I'm not at one of them because three this year, and I'm I'm pushing for six next year. I want six free training days next year, Andrew. That I means that there might be every other month. Andrew, that means there might be a chance that we're unsupervised at a free training day. So break out your Bruce Lee costume. You two are not allowed to go anywhere together without me. <laughs> Absolutely not. I'm ready. Okay, Craig, are you ready for your question? I'm nervous. Yeah, let's do this. Nervous? Why are you nervous? I don't know. Craig, what's your earliest memory of whistle kick? Who? Hold on. Before you answer, because I, I kind of know this. Andrew, do you know the answer to this? Do you know this story? There's a story here. I suspect it's... Actually, no. That's kind, that's more the, the... That's you and I meeting. That's not the same. Never mind. I'm just going to shut up. I, I don't know. I just work here. <laughs> I don't know anything. So, well, I, I guess Andrew, or yeah, Andrew, that's a good question because Jeremy and I both don't really remember a lot of things. We just became friends one day. Um, it, just, it was all of a sudden we were friends. Yeah, and and in in my head, um, I remember looking just for martial arts podcasts for inspiration, and I stumbled across yours. And I had listened to an episode, and I don't remember which one it is now, but it was in the double digits. Um. And Stacey, Stacey, so Stacy's guessing free training day in Vermont in 2019. And what I love about that answer, listen to the whole thing before you get upset, is how wrong that is. Because how much earlier Craig and I knew each other than that. We were, yeah, it was in the double digits for the episodes for sure. I don't remember what the first one was. I it, honestly, it might have been 10. 
Yeah, it, it might have been Terry right? Dow. Terry might have been the first okay. episode mm. because Terry and I were already friends and I yeah. saw his name. So, um, and uh, so then I listened to that episode. I listened to a couple others and I was like, this guy's pretty cool. So I friended you on Facebook and then reached out um, and just said, hey, will you come teach at my school for a day? And you showed up and you instantly like shook my hand, said hi. And it was a little nervous effort, like that nerve of meeting a martial artist you don't really know. And uh, he looked at me and he goes, dude. And he pointed at the back of my head. He goes, I am so jealous of your hair. And then rubbed his head. I have no hair. <laughs> so so those those are my probably two earliest in, uh, memories of Whistlekick. Yeah. Yeah, and we just and we just hit it off. Yeah, we've been buddies ever well, since. Um, I think one of my favorite things about the show is that my, one of my favorite and least favorite things about the show is that people get to know me without me getting to know them. But I'm a generally a pretty friendly person. I'm generally <laughs> Sean Flanagan's <laughs> here, and he says I met Craig in the womb. What's up, Sean? Was one of my original teachers. Yeah, so um, I've known Sean for twenty years. If this was if this show was rated slightly differently, I would have some follow up questions. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um, going back to what I said before, if I can get back there, <laughs> <laughs> because I'm generally a pretty friendly, outgoing, you know, gregarious person. When I meet someone, it's not usually me that's holding back on becoming friends with someone. It's usually other people who are more reserved. So if they come into to a dynamic where they know a bit about me, it's a lot easier to make a connection. So just as it's happened with you, it's happened with other people. You know, I've been recognized by voice at tournaments, which is a really weird thing. Uh, but I, I like all I like the friendships that have come from doing the show. You know, I, I knew when we started out that it wasn't directly monetized, right? Like we weren't selling the show, but the, when I, when I boil whistle kick down to what is the, what is the thing we do that, that is the best thing that we do? It's this podcast because of what it's done, because of the friendships that it's created, not just friendships for me, but friendships between other people. And it, it continues to blow my mind and I'm super proud of what we do. Uh, free train day 2019. That was the first year I taught there, I think. Yeah. So Tommy's saying that's when yeah. he met Craig and I. Yeah. Tommy just, um, Tommy lived a couple towns over and just kind of rolled over and, and showed up, if I remember correctly. And and was like, actually, no, I think he messaged me ahead of time, was like, hey, can I come to this thing? I was like, come to this thing. And um, and, and we, he and I clicked too. Yeah. And Stacy, that's right. You and yeah. Stacy, Matt. Um, I think one of my favorite uh, stories about how the whistle kick friendship and community developed, right. Was the last free training day when a lot of us hadn't seen each other. Yeah. And, yeah, and or, or Justin was there, Gabe and Jenny were there. Like there were people mm -hmm. whom we had talked to on the show or met and boom, like instantly there was just hugs. There and were so many I, hugs. I hugged people. I didn't even know. Yeah. Uh, and Sean says, I love the friendship that you guys have. It's one of the best things about the martial arts. Some of my best lifelong friendships I owe to the martial arts. Keep up the great workers. Thank you. And, and absolutely completely agree. And, and, you know, if, if we, if we think about, most of you know, you know, my feelings on what martial arts is. And to me, martial arts is primarily personal development, personal development through the lens of combat. And what is more personally developing or personally developmental than being around quality like-minded people that help you elevate your standing, that help you become a better version of yourself. Gourmet hugs. Stacy says so many gourmet hugs, not just the Italian side hug. <laughs> the Italian side hug makes a good photo though. Jared says, I know so many quote whistle kickers by name only. I'd love to meet them in person. Jared was at the first free training day. He's got to come back to another one. I we wish gotta, I was. We got to get you there, but I, but I wasn't. Uh, Andrew, now that you're here and I'm seeing you both together, it's almost like Comic Con all over again. 
I know. Yep. Yep. I was, so it's an interesting thing, Craig. Uh, I was at free training day 2019, but I don't believe I took your class. Don't take it personal. I don't know what you I were don't. I, I was I opposite know. Freddie. I was opposite Freddie, and I would have. I mm. wanted to take Freddie's class. <laughs> mm. God, you God. message me, and you're like, "Come on!" <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we, Craig, you and I, really, we hit our stride at, at Comic Con, without a doubt. Yeah. No doubt. There's a there's a great, and I'm not. I'm you know because I, I I try to censor my my word choice a bit when we're live, you know, when we record, those of you who know me in person know that I do not do that uh, when I'm not being recorded, but there's a great George Carlin bit and it's um, from the beginning of his last album. And he, he's talking about, you know, working on his new set and going around, traveling around. And he says, you know me, if, if they're, if they've got a zip code, I'll be there. And that's kind of how it, how it is like with Whistlekick, you know, it's like, you want me to come teach? I'll come teach. You want you want me to do a seminar? Oh, fine, we'll do a seminar. Should we do this thing over here? Yeah, let's do it. I say yes as much as humanly possible, which does get me into trouble. And it does mean I don't spend as much time at home as I would like to. And so we've started to have to say no on certain things, but I still say yes as much as I can. Jared Wilson is uh, offering to teach at uh, some free training day that he comes to. Jared, um... Somebody remind me to talk to Jared about free training day, please. I'm on Jared, Jared, Jared will do that. Jared, let's talk about free training day. There are things that I can't share publicly that you need to know about. So, Craig, uh, I hate to see you go, but I like I to get see it. You. But you love to watch him leave. <laughs> <laughs> Craig, thanks so much for being here, man. You are such a delight to have. Um, oh, my pleasure. How much money have we raised so far? Oh gosh, uh, Liz is in charge negative of dollars. No, Liz is in charge of keeping track of that of how many times you oh. say episode. <laughs> well, it's going to be a great episode, guys. I hope the episode goes really well. Thanks so Thanks much for being me. part of this episodic episode of episodes. So, so. <laughs> All right, see you guys Bye. later, man. Oh, that was so much fun. We're having a good time. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Um, do you remember our first how to fight? This is a trivia question. What was our first how to fight episode? Was it the one we did with Craig? Nope. I feel like that was the second one we did. Yep. It wasn't Greg. It wasn't nope. Gene. This I, I I I'm embarrassed. I should remember this. People are guessing numbers. I didn't mean numbers, but it's funny. Liz is just Liz is going a whole hog. Oh, maybe this is the amount of times we've said episode. I don't know. Um, I remember you and I talking about. It. I remember the genesis of the idea. Jenny is remember egg, but that's not right. When you hear it, you're going to kick yourself in the butt really, really, really bad. I know. I know. Oh, Jared's saying we should do best of the best, how to fight best of the best. But, Jared, I'll tell you, you right just now. Just turn it off. Jeremy's answer to how to fight best of the best would be learn any martial art because none of them do. No, you just turn it off and you take the VHS out because it doesn't even deserve to be on DVD. <laughs> and you set it on fire, and that's how you right. Win. On that note, I'm going to bring on our next guest. Are you ready? I'm so embarrassed already. Yes. Okay. Here we go. Hey, you guys are on vacation, and you're still on the show. What's going on? <laughs> Seven hundred episodes. Can you can you do it? Can you do it? There's can only one thing we can say. Woo! Oh, that was so restrained. My wife's here is right there. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yes, it's true. We are in Las Vegas. We're on vacation. And we just drove back fun? quickly from the strip because we couldn't miss the oh, seventh fun. episode of the greatest podcast in history. Right here. Wow. That's a lot of pressure. Are you guys having fun? Yeah. 
What and have you done? You've done anything cool? What did we do? To tell him about tonight. Uh, we went to Hell's Kitchen. Nice. Which yeah, I've never been. I've never been. I've never seen the show. Yeah, uh, but it's based on the TV show Hell's Kitchen. It was the. It was just a phenomenal. Is that the experience. one with um? What's his face? Gordon Ramsay. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. Was he there? No. No. Oh. Was the food oh. good? But there we were pictures there. of him. We were there. <laughs> was the food good? Phenomenal. Oh, yeah. yeah. Awesome. I think Sarah said it was the best meal she's ever had. For me, it's wow. easily in the top three. Oh, that's awesome. Easily. It was so you, amazing. You hope when you go to something like that that's so hyped up that it can live to the expectations because it so rarely does, right? All the things, you know, like when you go see a movie and like, it's the best movie ever. And everybody's saying that and you get there. And so you're expecting here. And even if it's here, you're disappointed because it wasn't what you expected. Yeah. I would say it exceeded all expectations. <laughs> Mark's here. He says, I made it. Let the party resume. Oh, we, we, didn't, we didn't even press pause, my friend. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, so the reason oh, we're he here says, is to talk about best of the best. Uh, how do we, can, Andrew, kick, kick him out. Mute him. <laughs> Okay. How can we be friends when you like the movie Best of the Best? But this is not the actual question. <laughs> I you love that movie. You watched it when you were younger and before good martial arts movies had been made. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Still do. Still have it. I own a copy of it. Hmm. We'll watch it together one time. It's 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 not. So here's a question. Why do you still train? Ah, it's a great question. And, and when you were talking to Craig, you, you talked about, um, I forgot where I was, how I was going to lead into it, but, oh, we were talking about uh, martial arts and, and, well, make it simple. I mean, we owe our relationships to martial yeah. arts. That's how we met. You, Jeremy, were actually there the day we met in Wells, I Maine. And uh, John Graham. I had nothing to do with it, but I was there. <laughs> no. No, I well, didn't say, old. you know, you two. No, no, I was, I was present. You were present. But, but here we are. So why do we still train today? So I'll, I'll go you, first. You, you can answer. Yeah. So I mean, I'll go first. One, it just um, it makes us feel good, makes us feel strong, mm -hmm. um, makes us, for me, I'm a little bit older, uh, makes me still feel young. But uh, mm -hmm. just love training. Love the way it makes my body feel. I love that Sarah and I can train together. You've been to our home, Jeremy, mm -hmm. so you see our setup. Uh, we're able to train together, and, and we have the upper gym and the lower gym, so to speak. Uh, gives us a chance to do something that we enjoy together. And we, we motivate each other and, and we're getting stronger together and, and staying strong together. And, and as we continue to grow old together, we'll grow old, but strong at the same time. Mm. You'll always be older. I'll always be older. Mm. It's true. It's true. It's true. Mm. Sarah, do you have anything to add? No, I mean, you haven't, you haven't been training it quite as long as Dennis, cause you're not well, as long as Dennis. So even <laughs> if you had been, he, he would still be. So. Yeah, no, it's something I got into later in life compared to most, but you know, wishing I did earlier, right? Because the, the people you meet and, and just the, the sense of accomplishment and yeah. feeling like part of something bigger. Yeah. That's awesome. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. But and for me now, the biggest thing is that we get to do these things. We get to do it together. And it's yeah. it's a whole new, we've been together coming going on four years now and um, being able to, to train together it just added a whole new aspect to it. It makes it so much even more enjoyable, and, and it's. I'm in it over 40 years, and I've always loved it, but I love it even lo even more now. So I so I've got a question because I, I you know you you were both married prior, yep. to people who did not train, right? Mm -hmm. And and it's hard to compartmentalize these things, but do you feel that the additional context you have with each other by having trained together? Does that give you extra tools to lean on in your marriage? It gives you a, a, a different understanding of your partner than you m might have had otherwise. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you, you kind of get each other a little more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You kind of like understand motivations behind things and kind of what, what drives someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's, it's the thing that, that linked us from the very beginning. Uh, training is what is what linked us uh, when we just started talking as just acquaintances as friends uh, a lot of a lot of our discussion was around martial arts training on, on around training um, and here we are we're on vacation but um, very important to us 
we get up, we go, we go down to the gym, we train, we talk about how, where we're going to fit our training in over the next couple of days while we're on vacation. So it's something that, that links us and it's important to us. Uh, we enjoy it together and we enjoy it more because we're doing it together. Um, nice. You know, uh, everything from the, from the, from the weightlifting to, to running to, of course, kicking and punching each other. <laughs> and somebody just, as I'm saying, as I'm like, Jared, Jared said, love it, through it, kicking and punching each other. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. No, it's, it's, it's just, it's, I, I couldn't have, and, and I've said this to, to the folks here on, on this, uh, on this episode before, and just in case, uh, whoever's keeping count episode, 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 episode. <laughs> and I was in episode 302 episode, um, just trying to run up the dollars there. Uh, <laughs> I, I must I'm flying first class. Yes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Keep it up. But, yeah, it's it's cool. it's the thing that's linked us from the very beginning and and keeps and links us to today. Right. And uh, it's a great common denominator. That's awesome. Thanks so much for being here. I I feel confident speaking for Jeremy when I say it means a lot to us that you guys are on vacation in Las oh, Vegas no. and decided, oh, we got to make sure we 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 are a part of this. That that really is awesome, yeah. guys. That's super cool. Thank you. All right. Could miss this. Love I'm so both. proud of you guys. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye. So go, win lo go win lots bye. of money. Yeah. We will. <laughs> bye bye bye. Oh, that was awesome. So much fun. I love those guys. Oh, how you doing? I'm, I'm you're crazy, working man. hard on this. You're like this you're you're all over the place on the boards. Yeah. The yeah. boards. This, this is no the big keyboard. deal. Yeah. Easy peasy. Uh, Stacy can't wait to meet uh, Sarah. You know what? I can't wait to meet Sarah. I've never met her officially. It seems like every time we have an event, her kids have like a big thing going. Gotcha. That's been, that's been the yeah. toughie. Yeah. But it'll happen. She'll be there. Yep. Awesome. Uh, so have you figured out, have you remembered who your first how to fight was with? I stopped thinking because uh, I assumed it the way you set it up, I thought it was going to be the person who was coming on. Then I saw Dennis, and I was like, Dennis didn't do a how to fight. No. Nope. Um, nope, too long. Here you go. Almost. Wow. Almost Jenny and Gabe. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear I just unmuted oh, yeah. you. Cool. Yeah. I just, with these headphones, I wanted to make sure. To... Yeah. Yeah, that's right. It was with hey. Gabe, wasn't it? It wasn't me. Not a fight. It was, it was but, with Gabe. Yeah, it was with Gabe. Because I said, who know who knows the live stuff, and yeah. who do I like working with? So we did that. <laughs> yeah. How are you? Yes. What's going on? Good. Doing good. We had today was a record day here. Um, we set a record. Say apparently, more. Um, we got like five inches of snow. Oh. And that's not something that's happened since 1965 here on april 11th so that's crazy yeah yes i mean uh thursday it was about 80 degrees out my kids were outside in some, uh, swimsuits and today they were out there in their snow gear so it's nice. been it's been fun but it's been crazy <laughs> so good yeah. times yeah yeah so gabe wanted to be here he's really not feeling great so that's uh okay. yeah that's okay. but he says hi yeah. and Everyone congratulations does. thank yeah. you Thank you. You know, you, you got, you guys have been, a, have been a big part of this, you know, it just the, the support, the energy, just, just the love, you know, we talked earlier about how I, I physically met you in person less than six months ago. Yeah. And at no point did it, it feel like I'm meeting someone for the first time. Totally. It was, oh, now we finally get to close this loop. Free training day felt like a reunion, even though we'd yeah. never met anyone in person. And, we were and, like, yes. And, so. and that was a feeling that a lot of people had. And, and I think that that, that might be um, a good way for us to describe it because so many people leave that event. Oh, that's, that's a fun idea. Jared, you're hired. Jared like said, it. is there a whistle kick map with 700 pins with the location of all there we your go. I'll start getting busy with pins. You're hired. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to mail, I think I have his address somewhere. I'm mailing him a map and pins <laughs> and a deadline. That's fantastic. Uh, but so many of us, 
you know, I, I, I know free, I know what free training day is going to be. And I still leave blown away and people come in for the first time and they leave and they're like, what just happened? Because it, it's so hard to put into words. And I, I think you probably hit the nail on the head. You know, it's a reunion. It's a reunion with people you've never met. Yeah. And it's an honor. Like we got to fly across the States and it was funny to tell people about it. They're like, you're going where now? And who are you going to see? It's like a bunch of people we haven't technically met, but we came back and we were like, no, it was seriously like going to spend the weekend with some close friends. And that's exactly how we feel. So it's an honor. And that's why we're doing one with you guys. I know. That's so exciting. I'm really, I'm really so excited pumped. about that. I'm so pumped. And you know, what, what's, what I what I'm curious of, um, and and I don't know which way I'm hoping for because you could you could look at either way as a win. Hmm. Are the people from the Northeast going to outnumber the people <laughs> in your area at your event in Portland? Like everybody's gonna fly out and it's just gonna be like, "Hello, we brought." Because <laughs> there are so many people who have said, "I'm going, I'm going." What do you need? Yeah. I'm going. I'll be there. I know that's like, it's so exciting to hear Craig say he's coming and um, everybody. And so of, it's, I've, yeah, I've heard a lot of people saying this, and there there are people there are a lot of people saying, "Okay, I'm trying to make it." And then, you know, as, as we as we try to get the third one knocked out, you know, yeah. get that on the schedule. Um, you know, there are people going, "Okay, you know, like is this like a Spartan thing? Like, do I get like <laughs> pieces of a metal and I put right. them together? You know, and 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 you know." Now I, I, I lord over Hyrule. There's a nerd reference for some of you. There you go. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, that'd be awesome. I think it'd be super cool if it was like half and half, right? It, it very well may be. Yeah. You know, it's it's a good time. Yeah. It's a good I'm time. Excited. You know, to, to borrow a common phrase, if you know, you know. Right. If you've never been, it's hard to put it into words. It just, yep. there's, there's yeah. a magic there and we're going to do everything we can to share it with as many people. I'm super excited to be a part of it. So, so hopefully we get some people at, at your free training day, your collectively mm -hmm. Gabe, that somebody who lives, you know, like out there somewhere, but far enough away and like they become number four. Right. So like, yes, because I, I do, I want six for 2023. Dude. It's the best thing we do outside of martial arts radio, right? Like let's, let's do more. Let's get more people involved. Absolutely. Let's Absolutely. change the world. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. So I'm going to ask you a question. Whom, it's a little rough in that sentence. Who is the person you feel you've learned the most from in martial arts and why? Oh man, I'm supposed to answer this quickly, aren't I? This is a huge yeah, question. Yeah, you know. Don't stall for time. No, that's a fantastic question. Um, it is. And the hard part is I have to choose one person, right? Um, yes. I have to choose one person, I guess. Thank you for following rules. Yeah, I'm a rule. I'm a rule person. <laughs> so is Gabe. That's why we get along so well. But um, anyways, I would have to say there's a guy named Harry McLean, and I hope at one point or another he's watching this. Um, but uh when I started, I was 12 years old and super excited and didn't know anything. And I am a, I've heard it explained that I'm, there are generally two kinds of people in the world. See, I use my hands a lot too. And don't, but there's, there's what people and why people, generally speaking, right? The, the why people, they don't do it until they understand why they're supposed to do it. And the what people, you tell them what to do and they just go do it and ask why later or maybe never. Yeah. And especially as a kid, I was very much a what person. Just, just I want to learn karate. I want to learn martial arts. Just tell me what to do. Um, and he was really, really good at giving me things to do, but then coming alongside and saying, okay, yeah, but why? Or how? Or what's the point? Um, but not in a, no, you can't do this until we ask all the questions, if that makes sense. And so he had me busy. He himself was 16 when he started teaching me. Um, mm -hmm. It was only a green belt. And in our system, that was like mid ranks. Um, but he stepped in where somebody had to do something so the dojo didn't close. And he did. And um, he was kind. And he worked his butt off just to mm -hmm. make sure we had 
things to do that weren't just filling time. He was constantly studying. He was going to other places and asking, hey, what can I learn from you? Can I put a white belt on? Will you teach me? Can I pay 20 bucks? It's all I've got. At 16. Yeah, yeah. At 16, and, and he's he doing would, this. Exactly. And he would come back and he'd go, hey, I learned this thing, but I only had an hour there, so I don't really understand it, but let's do what I learned. And you think of all the questions and I'll go back and I'll ask them and then I'll bring back the answers. And so there was this constant inflow of new information that we would process together. And that's kind of, that's what gave me my foundation of yeah. um, being a person that says, you want me to practice this form a thousand times so I can do it in my sleep and do it backwards and forwards. Great. I'll do that. And then he'd come alongside, he'd go, fantastic. You're doing it great. But what are we actually doing? And so, yeah. And, and he just, um, uh, you know, I consider him my sensei, even though he never ran the school. So, yeah. I, over the years, I've had the opportunity to train, as you know, with a lot of people. And yeah. I think one of the biggest differences between the, for people that I have a full understanding of, of context for their training, the people who I think are on a different level were conditioned to ask that question, why at the right time? I'm not necessarily going to say earlier because it's, it's different for different people, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of people who are in a black belt and are they never ask why they are never asked why it's not a question that, that arises for them and they may have phenomenal forms phenomenal technique but why allows you to make improvements you can't have improvement without change you can't have growth without change and that requires asking why yep yeah yeah so you were learning with him he was just a little bit older than you he yep. had just a little bit more knowledge a little bit more understanding of martial arts than you and so he was developing rapidly as he's trying to internalize and share and i i can imagine that you and the others you know he'd show you something and we some of the times somebody might say that doesn't make sense what about this could it have been this and you know what i bet it was that and i remembered it wrong right like that kind yeah. of stuff and so yep. now there's this hive mind developing what your yeah. curriculum was, what your understanding was. And I didn't know, like, I I didn't know that part, the part about him going out and bringing back. Mm. That's mm -hmm. new information for me. But that, so very much, you may remember after free training day, I shared something with you and Gabe about how you reminded me of the dynamic between my original instructors. Yes. Yeah. And and now I understand why. And, and you know, I'll, there's too, too, too many words to give everyone watching, listening the context, but just know that that I came from very, very special people. I saw something very special in the two of you and the way you interacted with each other and taught. And it's because of why. It is yeah. that question. I, I have no doubt now. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah, I know as as I've developed as an instructor, I always I always encourage the why. Um, and sometimes the what is important and, and I reserve the right to say, Hey, I'm going to explain that later, but I will explain it. And if I forget, because I'm human, you have permission to say, Hey, we don't know why. Right. Um, but, uh, to get those discussions and those thoughts going, because, you know, he was the one who I, I remember he was a big guy and I've never been that big, but he, uh, I remember him grabbing me by the gi and just saying, okay here's how we've trained, but you're not going to be wearing a gi if you're, you're not going to be wearing a uniform, right? Like right. nobody's going to grab the lapel of your uniform and wait for you to do something, right? My turn. Now your turn. It's not the way the real world works. And I remember him um, putting on some construction. He worked construction sites and he put on his boots and stomped out there. And one day just grabbed me by the collar and just said, this is what it's really going to feel like, you know? And I remember being terrified and he goes, I need you to feel that and think about what we're doing, how it applies and why. And yeah. um, I mean, to be completely honest, it saved my life three times right right now. I can tell you, I know for sure that, um, you know, as God. Do you mind sharing one of those? 
Yeah, I wrote an article. I, I wrote for Marshall Journal one of one of those experiences. Um, MarshallJournal.com. <laughs> yeah. So the story, um, the story, quickly was I was working for a neighbor, and um, his grandson was a an acquaintance, um, not a stranger at all. Which attackers usually aren't strangers, um, mm-hmm. but he had crossed a lot of lines that I. Mm-hmm. He gave me a lot of red flags. I should have. Um, noticed and taken heed of, and I didn't because I was working and I was just, I was 15 um, and learning. Anyways, uh, he attacked me with intentions um, that were uh, very serious and he came up behind me, choked me um, and everything went black. I had bruises on my neck, so it was not just a a harmless thing, but, um, but in that moment, I just I kind of just snapped into response mode and it was one of those moments where you're like, Oh, this isn't like what we do at the dojo. We've done these things a thousand times, but this hurts and I can't breathe and I can't see, you know? And so, but having been pushed by Harry um, just a little further than a lot of people push, you know, in training and, and also just, you know, his philosophy of, okay, so it didn't work. Do something different, figure out why not. Oh, well, that's the way we train. Um, which I'd been told by other instructors, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, and so uh, there's a balance there, but no, he was like, okay, it didn't work. So don't do it that way. Um, And uh, so that was one of the scenarios I was able to leave. I was able to leave unharmed. I mean, bruises heal, other things don't. Um, And so, uh, yeah, I was able to get out of there and I was able to stay away and stay safe. So, yeah. Thank you, Harry. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so, yeah, he was the one who, uh, if I may share just another 10 seconds, he's he was the one who um, saw the, he, <laughs> he saw the writing on the wall, as it were, that our dojo was closing. We were losing the lease and my, sen- my sensei had decided to pack up and move to another state. And he went, okay, well, let's, you're a brown belt, you're training four or five days a week. Let's get you moving towards black belt before this is an impossibility. So he ran me through a pretest a couple of times and and my test didn't happen. Um, mm. And that's okay, but you've heard that story a bit, but he mm. was the one who chased after those documents and said, hey, she did the work. Here's the thing, right? The board couldn't assemble, but sign the papers and I'll find her and give them to her. And that's what he did mm. 15 years later. So that's that a was good person. a huge honor. So, yeah. yeah. Awesome. That's Thanks cool. for coming on. Thanks for letting me share, and thank you. It is an honor to be a part of Whistlekick. Of course. Congratulations. You are, you are a phenomenal part. And and for those of you who don't know, Jenny is the one who wrote the origin of Master Hopkick. Which Craig was reading. I was going to say, Craig, you Which have Craig great was reading. taste in reading material. So. Yeah, and, you know, pe- people, it's – it really is a good book. You did a phenomenal job. Jenny uh, – other Jenny and I. There, there are two Jennies, and they spell their name the same way. And I, I just need everyone to know early on that was very difficult for me. <laughs> ah, there you go. There it is. Yeah. There it is. Um, yeah, it, it is. It is a a fun book. You know the 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 marketing we put out. You know for all ages. It, it really is like it's a fun. Like it's a very approachable book. But it's just because you're not a child doesn't mean you won't enjoy it because you would because I did. Awesome. Thank you. And Thanks. I'm working on working on books two and three. So. I yeah. heard. Yeah. I heard. Oh, and, and Liz is saying her, her son says, her son Vinny, the book is awesome. You need to write book number two. She's working on it. Yeah. It's Stacy it. says, I'm ready for book <laughs> two. Damn it. <laughs> Stacy, come do some of my other, uh, come take over some parts of other parts of my life so I can just sit and re- write. That would be amazing. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks Careful so what much. you wish for. Give our best. <laughs> I will yeah, most definitely. Give, give Gabe a hug for me. I'll talk to you I guys. I will soon. do it. Thank you guys. All right, All right guys. So much. Bye, Jenny. Good night. <laughs> oh, so much fun. I like like this is the best. Thank you for doing this. Yeah. Um, you know we we were talking about the the free training days. Uh, I'm going to yeah. share this message here from Jared. Three training day is somewhere south of Nashville. I will say this, Jared. We want to do six free training days next year. We could do one in Nashville. We could. If you want to help set this up, 
we can make that happen. Jared would be a, would be a wonderful person to get one organized. So yeah. yeah, so that leaves two more. So if anybody out there in other parts of the country, I'd like to do one, um, probably somewhere in California. I'd like to do someone one somewhere probably in in Texas, you know, because I I know where our audience is. But you know, it doesn't have to be only six, right? We've got a repeatable formula. Yeah, it's not a ton of work. Pretty awesome. Uh, so we've got one more guest to come on. Okay. However, let's do it. I have, I have one more question for you. One more. Oh, Stacy says, oh, I'd love to do that, but probably no, not. probably not Hawaii because one, Money. expensive. Two, those Kaju Kembo people are no joke. Um, yes, but if it's in Hawaii, we could probably get uh, Ron Van Cleef to maybe help out. <gasps> uh, uh, FTDH. That'd be pretty cool. Free training uh, day, Belize. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one more, I have one more question. Yeah. And it is when, or, or who was the first guest that you had back that was on the show twice? The first person to come on the second time. It is not our next guest coming on. Uh oh, I think it was Brendan. Is that your five? Jared Paul, Jared Paul, Brendan. Those are the three that I remember recurring early on. Now I could be wrong because I certainly have been wrong before, and I will check this when the next guest is out. However, I my quick research looked like Tanya Panzin Pan Panizzo. 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 So Tanya was episode 38. And then was also episode um, 171. I would have sworn Brendan was on before 171. There's an episode called Conversations with, with Master Brendan Goodall. That I think we recorded in the car. When was that one? I'll, I'll look that up. But Tanya's was okay. 71, not 171. Oh, 71. Okay. All right. Then, then that I, that doesn't surprise me. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to research this while your next guest comes on. And they're about okay. to talk right now. Are you ready? Let's do it. Okay. Boom. Hey, guys. Look, I look, get to look. see you. <laughs> hey, we match you, match you. We're wearing the same shirt. You know, she we, planned it. I did not. So we started this morning with that amazing meeting. And I think yeah, that brain chemistry just led to this. What do you know? <laughs> yeah, because I was definitely not wearing wearing a t-shirt at that point. I was just wearing the hoodie from First Cup. I hadn't put on real clothes yet. Matt, where's your something shirt? Come on, man. I have to leave in five minutes for work. <laughs> he, was, oh. he was wearing his whistle kick oh. sweatpants. Those amazing whistle kick sweatpants that everybody yeah. needs to have at least three pairs of. <laughs> so Andrew's right. She did not find it back. She told me to tell you to change so you didn't match. It's true. I was one of the people that was there in the beginning when we could hear you and you had no idea we were there. Oh, I and it. I was laughing. I was laughing. I love it. That's great. Hi, Tommy. <laughs> oh, That's right. Jenny is in Hi, row. Jenny. It's true. It's very Tell true. Gabe we send our love. So what's going on? The baby's You're asleep. You're getting ready for work. The baby's asleep. Yes. So, do I have to talk quieter? <laughs> No, if she gets yeah, up, you can yell all you yeah. want. I'm leaving. If she gets up, it's on me anyway. So <laughs> that's what. That's a good time. Hi. <laughs> I love this. Hi, everybody Greg. Just, everybody's just coming on. Everybody's just saying hi. So I, I want for I. We may have some people here who are watching, listening later. Um, the majority of the people who have these these relationships are saying hi to each other. It's from First Cup. It really because is. it's yeah. every morning and they're there and they're chatting with each other while I'm just, I don't know, rambling and they I talk to like each other and I'm pretty sure it's not about me anymore. Yeah. I'm, I'm just going to like put a cardboard cutout on the couch and just hit go and go back to sleep and they'll yeah, still be there and they'll still talk to each other. We would, it's, it's, it wouldn't be the same, but we would. No, <laughs> it might be better. It might be better. You don't know. We should We had a it. great chat when you were on the plane that one morning. So. 
I saw there was a group yes. chat. They made a group chat. Yeah. First top <laughs> uh, mornings at 6.30. 6.30 yes. Eastern. So come by. Uh, cool. Cool. So yeah. uh, the time, yeah, yeah was See? the time you were that there, we made a group chat without you. Yeah. Well, um, I, I am often left out. There's, there's literally been a team social event that I was not included in. Yeah. <laughs> At least one. Not intentionally. They forgot about me. <laughs> I just want everyone to know okay. that if you feel like, <laughs> okay, this is true. I'm, I can't. I, can't I, I, I wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna throw you under the bus. No, I was me, gonna, me. Me. I for, for the audience listening at home, it's, when the pandemic happened and we started having like some whistlekick group social events, uh, there were a, there were. I had a thread without Jeremy because I didn't want to bug him about stuff, and then we had a thread with everybody and Jeremy. And I planned one of them accidentally on the thread that did not have Jeremy. So we all showed up and wondered, where the heck is Jeremy? And he never showed up. And it's because um, I forgot to make sure he was in. So fun fact, my water bottle right here blocks my Wi-Fi signal. Just figured that out. Um, <laughs> apparently putting it right there is just too much for my computer. So Andrew messages me after this, this social gathering. Why didn't you come to the thing? And I was like, what thing? He's like, the thing. We had this thing. And I was like, oh, what are you talking about? I wasn't invited. He's like, sure you were. And I was like, when? How? Where? A couple minutes passed. He's like, oh, I forgot to include you on the group chat. Whoops. Yep. Yep. So, so I share that only to say, for those of you out there, if you feel like, you know, Sometimes you feel left out. We all feel left out from time to time. Sometimes we feel like we're not included, especially among groups that we feel really should make an effort to include us. I was left out of my own company's <laughs> social event. So yeah, Andrew, I win. Like class will take over. <laughs> if they want to do all the work, that's fine. They can, they can take over. It doesn't have to be hostile. I'll, I'll, here, I'll give them my work. Yeah. So anyway, says, that is our shirt for free training day. Where the heck is Jeremy? Okay, so, so I'm gonna leave back to chat and I'll send put a question up. But yes, I okay. did. It was my fault. It was all on me. <laughs> okay. We love you, Andrew. I love y'all too. <laughs> Such a good time. All right, what's our question? What do we got? Can you share a memory or time a martial arts instructor made a significant impact on your life? And How I about the impact, the impact where this guy broke my rib or, <laughs> or the impact. Um, how about something sweet? Now, before I started training or maybe early in my training, my mm -hmm. youngest was a little dragon. He was four or five years old at the time. And he was having a very rough day. He was having trouble getting on the floor for class that night. And he just was crying and, and, was so frustrated with the world. And Mr. Nather came over and said like two words to him. The kid completely changed his state of mind. He was smiling, he was beaming, and he was out on that floor and he had an amazing class, best class in his life. I don't remember what he said. I just remember the look I in my son's remember. eyes. <laughs> and, and just the impact that he had on my son impacted me. And then... Uh, maybe a couple weeks That's after awesome. that, I had an injury and I was trying to hold back during class. And he just told me to push myself and, you know, just don't even think about it. Just go beyond where you think you can stop. Now, that was before you t you two started seeing each other. That was roughly like maybe a, maybe a month before. It was it was really okay. close. OK, it was really close because I, cause I, I, I think I think those those bits have a lot of significance. Right. That. Yeah. You know, you, you start to see who people are and you start to see what somebody is made out of. I know, you know, having a tremendous impact with, with seemingly minimal effort on your child. I mean, that's that's big stuff. He's huge. Stuck with me. Stuck with me. Clearly. He's, yeah. he's on the couch with you. He is. There's, yeah, what was she thinking? there's a toddler just over that away. <laughs> so I... 
I, I've heard this story, but I've forgotten the, the relevant details. He broke your ribs? He, yes. I think, I think we have to hear this. Okay, so I was, what, ninth cup? So I had been training for roughly six months total. Mm -hmm. And it was a sparring day for class. And he was trying to take on, what was it, four of us? Something like that. It was whatever the, all the teens and the adults in the class were that day. Yeah, so it was all mm -hmm. the big kids. And it was him against all of us. The all of us was not doing a very good job of getting anywhere close to him. They were too afraid. Me, the big bad ninth gub, and the short one, I snuck in there and I kept trying to get in my attacks. Well, one time I slid right in there and I was about to kick him. And he lifted up his big size 14 foot and planted <laughs> it right in my rib cage. And ended up cracking a couple of my ribs. And that's the day that he kicked his way into my heart. Oh, but also <laughs> that that's a great and gross story. And Jared says again, love through kicking and punching. That's right. With that's a right. laughing emoji. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's the one for me. It hurts so much. <laughs> yeah, they don't do anything for that. Just wrap it. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like he, he stopped for a second just to make sure I could still breathe. And then he expected me to keep going, which I was fine with. But it was just like, all right, come on, let's go. Keep going. We're still in the match. Yeah. I'm okay with it. <laughs> awesome. 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 <laughs> Matt, do you have a... Maybe we're stretching the time that we have with you, but do you have a story about, you know, somebody that was really impactful for you? Um, I have two. So um, I might have been like... A... Can, you, can you lean to the other... <laughs> He leaned and you went off camera. He was he was leaning back so we could be the same height, just for reference. She's being too cheesy. I need room. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> uh, I might have been training for about a year, and I jumped from the beginner's class to the intermediate group. And my, our Saturday instructor, she was ruthless in how she did self-defense and pad kicking anything with a partner. And she used me as a guinea pig and it scared the crap out of me because I was not ready for what she was about to do. But it's when it started everything with how to apply everything, making it real and just amping up the intensity instead of just know this, do that. So it, it took a hard approach because I was at that the same time I started trying to assist and learn how to teach. So it, it all made happened. it real for you is what it sounds like. Yeah. It, it made it very real. I think it played a lot into how I became an instructor and how I am now as an instructor. Mm -hmm. I still reference her when I teach class. It's been almost oh, 20 cool. years. Oh, awesome. And then I might have been around a red belt. So I've been training for about three years, give or take. I was at a random tournament. And this instructor came up to me. I had no idea who he was at the time and told me I was the future of martial arts. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. Like... And then about a year, year and a half later, I was up for my black belt test. He happened to be an, a friend of my instructor, and he was on my black belt board. Oh, cool. I had never actually officially met him. Like, he came over, said that, and just left. He saw something. Yeah. So that, that turned into a big it. thing, too. There's a lot of incentive I, to keep I, Yeah. I, I, like, I like when those connections happen. The, the woman you mentioned, you ever told her how impactful she was? Um. Actually, she had disappeared for a few years, and then she came back. And I might have been a second-degree black belt at the time, and I helped her prep for her master's test. Nice. But if you never told her, I, I hope you I, mean, I, hope you I, I, I don't know if I said it directly, but we definitely have had conversations that led in that direction. And just at that point, I kind of impacted her, too, because just the relationship we built, because she taught me how to teach. So every Saturday, we spent anywhere from four to six hours together, just That's awesome. on the floor, watching me I, 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 become this thing. A, a <laughs> lot of us underestimate how, how impactful hearing, how impactful you were was to someone else. I mean, you know, as, as, as a teacher, like that's the goal, but we, we usually have to connect those dots for ourselves. So for someone else, uh, like, it's funny. You changed my life, right? Like that's, that's yeah. better than any, any th other reward. It's funny enough, Jenny probably talks to her more now on yeah. Facebook than I do. <laughs> and that's, that says something. I have never 
physically met this instructor mm -hmm. and yet I'm still learning things from her through Matt. So I, I have this relationship with her indirectly. So I'm still able to thank her for things too. It's awesome. Well, Jeremy, it's nice seeing you. Good to yeah, always see well. your pretty face. <laughs> but I need to run. I got to be there in like five minutes. <laughs> thanks, for, uh, thanks for doing this. Appreciate absolutely. it. Thanks for coming on, man. Thanks so much. Oh, we were on no camera. Problem. I'm sorry. I don't care. <laughs> I'm far from sorry. <laughs> so uh, a lot hello, of Andrew. What, what's that? Hi, Andrew. But hello again. Oh, hello. So a lot of people are, are, are loving the couples together. Dennis Campbell. Yeah. Campbell together and jenny while matt was talking was like you got that right yeah. <laughs> she's she's multitasking she's she's good man I you don't even know you don't even know couples that kick together stick together we should put Just that don't on go a shirt me when i'm taking notes that's all some somebody remind me and we'll make a shirt design with that oh boy right after you make the shirt that says john woo john woo john yeah. I'm waiting for it. That that's uh that's a first cup thing. <laughs> that's a first cup thing. If you don't if you don't come to first cup, then then you have less of an understanding of it than I do, and I'm there every episode. And and so. and a reminder for people: you don't have to come to first cup at six thirty. I listen every morning at like seven thirty. Yeah, it's Not it's there. Yeah. It's 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 there. We just do them, and you can watch or listen. But but they're fun. We have a good time. Jenny, thanks so much for coming on. Yeah, Jenny, thank you. It I can talk to you twice in one day. How lucky awesome. am I? <laughs> thanks, guys. Congratulations on seven hundred, Star. Thank you. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye. Oh, Jeremy, that's fun. Oh, by the way, while you were yeah. talking to Jet, Matt, uh, Jenny, and Matt. Uh, Tanya is the first person to come back. Okay. Brendan Goodall's was later than episode 71. Okay. You you did you did your checking. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm what was that? What was that episode we brought her back for? Um, I will look. It was something about because it was early kids. Okay. It was early in the Thursdays. She was like the last because I remember your I, first it was Thursday 37 episode. or 39 was the first Thursday episode. 33. 33? Okay. Yeah. November 12th. I do my homework. You you do, clearly. It's like this uh, is your job. Episode 71 with Tanya was martial arts benefits for children. Okay. Yeah. So this was episode 700, guys. Like it's episode 700! Holy guacamole. How do you feel, Jeremy? Uh, right now? Yeah, like we just did 700 episodes. Like, I don't mean like I feel tired. Um, I like, this is episode I feel 700. tired. I'm excited. Um, you know, th this is th this is a great example of, of things being iterative, right? Like, if you had told me a few years ago, pardon me, I'm going to yawn. If you told me a few years ago, you know, like, you're ultimately going to have like a bunch of people watching episode 700 live. You're going to stream it on three different platforms and you're going to have this awesome co-host and he's going to like run the background for that episode. And you're going to bring like friends on. And we've been like, that sounds like so much work. Also wait, 700, right? Like, so it's, it's everything else that we talk about at Whistlekick. It's everything else that we try to get people to do. It's the slow incremental progress. And so when you do that, it's not as daunting. And it really, because I'm immersed in it, it's the, I think the difficulty for me is to take several steps back and be able to look at what we've done. And it's awesome. And I love it. But it doesn't feel like what we've done today is big, even though I know it is. If that Does that make any sense? Yeah. Jared wants to know if it makes you feel old, excited, or flabbergasted. Um, I never feel old. I'm like Merlin. I'm aging backwards. Uh, I do feel excited. I don't know how to feel flabbergasted. That's more like surprise, right? Um, I don't feel flabbergasted. Okay. I feel... I'm, I'm honored. Like, as, as 
I'm proud of what we've done, but I'm more so honored that the things that that we do, like the show, mean enough to people that, you know, I've been watching the numbers in the corner and they've been pretty consistent the entire time we've been doing this. Yeah. There are a bunch of people who've been sticking around for 90 minutes while we've done this show. And for quite a few of them, it's past their bedtime. And I know they're staying up late for this show. Like it's 10 o'clock. It's past my bedtime. But what we do means something to people. And that means a lot to me. Yeah. Dennis, so I think that's, uh, it's, you know, 700 and the podcast just keeps getting better. We keep finding new ways. You know, you and I talk about that a lot. It's like, how, how do we make these little changes? You know, I, I, I showed you this mic, right? So like, we're going to start using this mic that I had when we do the Q and A episodes, you know, is that a huge deal? No, but we're constantly looking for these refinements at this point and we're going to keep going and we're just going to keep doing episodes because what we're doing is working. And how do you make it better without the repetitions? How do you get better at your technique if you're not going to class? How do you get better at sparring if you're not working with partners? One one percent improvement is still improvement. Doesn't have to be fast. One percent every time becomes dramatic improvement. Yeah, Stacy's uh, wants us to here's to a thousand. Kelly's like here's to seven hundred more. That would be oh, that sounds so. It's, can, okay, okay. Let's just talk about a thousand. No, let's let's. <laughs> seven, Jeremy, don't worry about it. We're going to move on. It's okay. Welcome to Wish Your Kick, Martial Arts Radio, episode 23,000. We got going. And we got three more guests. Just kidding. <laughs> oh, man. That was almost this not was funny. Fun. This was fun. We was fun. Um, Thanks for doing this, man. Absolutely. We, we definitely want to let everybody out there know that, the, you know, they can support us. Join us on Patreon. Buy something from whistlekick.com. Use the code podcast15. Save yourself a couple of bucks. Who doesn't like to do that, right? Uh, you can, you know, look at whistlekick.com slash family. See everything you could possibly do for us to help out. As well as some exclusive stuff that you don't find anywhere else. Yeah. You know, one of the cool things about Patreon and, uh, you know, they won't know this. and and But, you know, we had Ron Van Cleef on, which was you did so have Ron Van on. freaking Holy amazing. Cow. Right. And, you know, he is like a big name. Right. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow you're recording with another big name. Yeah. And like, like, like a name that when Andrew said, oh, yeah, you're recording with. And I was like, wait, for real? You were like the and I was like, yeah. 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 Uh, and people in the Patreon don't know yet because I just set this up like Friday but I suspect in your next email to Patreon subscribers, they will find out who this person is. It's a big I deal. thought I put it in last week. Did I not put it in last week? You might have. You might have I don't remember. I, thought, I think it was the yeah. I think it was the main the main update I did last week. But yeah, like it's it's the only place you find out like who's coming up. We reserve that for Patreon contributors. It starts at two dollars a month. Yeah. So pretty, pretty cool. Liz says, I remember you first talking about this dream years and years ago. You were the inspiration for me. You think it, dream it, make it happen one step at a time. Um, I don't know how to do any do it any other way. I want something. I go for it. That's not always a good thing. Yeah. But you don't have any, like you don't have anything without that. Yeah. <laughs> Jenny says, go buy books, please. Jenny, uh, Jenny's in charge of our book division. She so, forgot. Yeah, to tell we've got a go. bunch of books. That's okay. Marketing, marketing is my job. Not hers. <laughs> so <laughs> Great That's show. I impersonate an auctioneer. Because that's right. what I hear when I hear an auctioneer. Jeremy. It's getting silly. 700's yeah. a wrap, buddy. Thanks, man. You are very welcome. I appreciate you. And uh, really we all know, everybody knows, the show is better because of you. So Thanks, man. I, I love it. I'm going to go to bed now. 
That sounds great. All right. We're going to sign off, everybody. We hope you all enjoyed this. Had a good time. Uh, it, Liz, you're correct. It's way past Jeremy's bedtime. <laughs>